So since I got the steel compound, this project was to take the old one off, put all the accessories on it, get the new one on, and then once that all works and it seemed like it got installed okay and locked in nice, try the compound. And as you'll see, that didn't go quite as planned. Well, good news, bad news. Good news is this fit on there and I was able to get this off with the little slanted pins. All the stuff went back in. It seems snug in this direction. So the I got the, the movable gib set right. So that part's good. I still have to figure out about putting, I have an, a replacement oil button. It's not called an oil button, but I have one of those coming. It should be here Tuesday. This is Sunday. So then I can f measure and drill and put that in there. So that way it will be able to oil this screw that goes in there. But one thing, and I have to measure it to see, I suspect that this is sli just slightly thicker than this. I have to measure it to confirm. But because of that, this is clamped down tight and up against the bottom of the tool post, but it still slides in and out, which is not going to work. I mean, obviously the solution is I could take this this piece and carefully clean off or you know sand grind whatever some of that thinner and then that should hold because ideally you want it such that there's a slight gap between the top of this piece the t-nut and the bottom of this piece the quick change tool post that way, that's what pulls this together and locks it in. If the T-nut is too tall, it locks in but can still slide because there's nothing holding it. So, And then since I, my initial thought was I need to take some metal off there, well, maybe I'll see if I can get the milling attachment to work. And I got all the pieces in, got all the stuff sorted, and then got in and got that all running and got it all attached and tried to find where all the parts were. And then I'm looking and looking and looking and I don't have any of the milling bits or milling type stuff that I would need to actually get that to work. So those little round pieces went in and but I don't have anything that goes in and cut. The ever fun things of new stuff and not 100% sure how to use it. Not sure if I even have all the parts. So I figured, okay, I will see like, the perfect thing of why this milling attachment exists is to take a little bit of metal off small parts. Well, that T-nut counts as a small part. I managed to get the compound off. I did find another one of those little slanted pins in the box of stuff that I wasn't sure what it came from. That came from the milling attachment, so I put that back in and added a drop of oil on both of those so that the stiction will keep the pins in. I managed to get the milling attachment on, and I think it's square because this is right at 90. So 90 matches there. And I found a bunch of little spacer blocks that I'm guessing was to be used for this because it has the little marks like would go in here. So I managed to get that jammed in and that worked. And that I think is, it's fairly tight. Well, I, I can't find out, but we would see if that's tight enough to hold that in place. Then I managed to use these things that I got. This was a 3D printed part that goes down in like that to carefully hold the gears such that you can use this that I got to loosen the chuck. And I managed to take that off and I managed to put this piece in that the milling attachments go into. This is tightened in. That's all snug between here and here. And I have the right Allen wrench to go in there. And then there's this little hole in the front. I'm fairly certain that's what these little things go in for. Even if they don't want to come out of the box. I'm fairly certain that's what these go in for. And then you would put the appropriate size cutter or whatnot in that you're using. And 
that's where I started to run into not having the stuff. So, these are all round. I don't have any round cutters. And I know they would sell high-speed steel round stock that you could make cutters on. And I have the cutter grinder, which theoretically I could make a custom end on if I had that working yet, and if the first operation for the lathe was not supposed to be to make a new pulley so I can get that to work. So theoretically, if I had high-speed steel round stock, I could make something like that. If I had a regular grinder, I could make something like that. I don't have one of those yet because I haven't needed it. So the only thing I have is this little cutter, which is square stock, and it doesn't really fit, and I don't think you're supposed to put, I mean, maybe you're supposed to put square stock in there, but for some reason, round holes doesn't seem to think that you're supposed to put square stock in there. But even if you are, I'm fairly certain that neither of the, well, maybe that one, but just, if you're just going like this on it, but I'm sure none of the cutters that I have currently, I don't believe are the shape that you would put in here to face off, because I don't have any end mills or those sorts of things. So, yeah, they think I'm stuck for now. So I will go back and I will figure it out. If there's, a, look, see if there's YouTube things or other things or what you would, what kind of cutters you put into this thing for doing the milling part. Because I got, like I said, I got it. I got this in, if I had a cutter, I could use this to move it back and forth. And I could use the top thing to go up and down. But I don't have anything to go between here and here to do that part. Good thing is, this attached, that part's good. Yeah, this is like 0.18 inches. And this one is, you can see, is a bit thicker. So that's the problem. And the other thing I noticed that the original lantern tool post will grip correctly for this. So it's possible that this was cut and designed for the original lantern tool post because it's supposed to be a drop-in replacement. But the issue is this top metal is too thin. If this top metal had been a little bit thicker, I would have, it would have worked. Or I guess if I had a if I had a thin enough washer to stick in there, a fender washer or something, that'll give it enough surface area and maybe I could use it that way and if that's the case then I won't necessarily have to try and do milling first so I tried to get this to work with a fender washer that worked managed to use a file to get that spaced out and attaching it that way I had to get it with the space so it didn't conflict with the t-nut otherwise it would still bind up and lock wrong I didn't have a test tight enough at first I tried again then that worked and then i actually did a test i did a test and made chips this was very cool it was only in brass but it worked so yay i got to actually use it for once or for the first time i'm still not sure that this is height wise correct but it did it did cut the whole way off. Even with the quick change tool post and the new uh, little machine shop quick change pieces, I realized I still don't have cutters. So the one thing I do have is a cutoff blade that was in their kit. So I set that one up. As you saw, the T-nut was clamping up tight before it had a chance to clamp onto the compound. So I had a large fender washer, and so I used some files, uh, some round files and a triangular file to get that to be slightly larger than the top of the T-nut and put that in, and you can see that as the little spacer there. And that let me clamp this down tight. So now this quick change tool post is clamped tightly to the steel compound. Now I can do the quick changes and when I pull to tighten the quick change thing to be tight, it doesn't shift things, which is a good thing because it's not supposed to do that. What I had in the chuck jaws already was the piece of brass that I got with the lathe. So I figured, okay, I have 
cut off blade. I will just take a skim cut the whole way across and it didn't do horrible. It didn't do great. But I'm not sure you're supposed to use a <laughs> cut off blade to do the facing cut. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to use one of the other angled cutters which I don't have to do the facing cut because I always remember other people using the, the angle with the appropriate so it's set correctly anyway uh, either way I made little brass chips on my lathe for the first time so the new compound locks in place which is good that was the important bit I still have to put the oil hole in but I can work on that later the quick change tool post now locks in correctly now that I have the little spacer washer there and hopefully that will work okay and next I just got to work and get other cutters and things so I'll have to do some research and sort that out and see what all the various things to get to start